Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I will be making the Star Wars Rancor diorama. I will be covering all the steps to get to this finished result. As the base for the diorama, I will be using this board of multiplex. On top of this, I will be placing some high density foam, which I already cut into shape. Some weight is then added, so that it dries evenly. Using a hot wire cutter, I cut most of the pieces needed to make the walls and the door. The arches for the door were too big to cut in one piece, so I divided them into separate pieces. As the next step, I will begin making the heavy gate for the build. I make the markings using this little metal thing that I found and then glue all the bits together. I also cut out these little monopoly houses, which were then added. The door is then primed using this gesso primer. Some of the insides of the walls and this door I painted separately as this will be hard to reach once attached. To give some texture to the door arches, I've added some acrylic wall filler, followed by a light dusting of tile grout. It was then time to start assembling the walls. I didn't use any pins or supports, just some hardcore PVA glue. In preparation for a later step, I've also cut out this little mouse hole in one of the walls. To carve an opening for the trap door featured in the wall, I've used this Dremel tool. This will generate quite a bit of dust, so it's a good idea to wear a dust cap for this step. The hatch covering this opening is then cut out of a thin sheet of styrene. Once done, I then sanded it and gave it a bit of texture using some plastic body. As the next step, I've added a layer of wood filler to fill in most of the gaps and make everything level. I could then start assembling the gate starting with the inside arches. I decided to fully paint and weather the door at this stage, as this will be hard to reach once it's fully assembled. I gave the door a base coat of dark grey and then add some streaks of pigment wash. To give the door its metal appearance, I've used a graphite pencil for the sharp edges and then a sponge with some metallic paint on random areas. For some color variation, I've also added some streaks using a Van Dyke Brown oil wash. Mm -hmm. 
with the door painted and weathered is then assembled with the rest of the door pieces. I wanted to add a set of LEDs to the ceiling, so I left some room for a battery pack on the back of the diorama. It turned out to be a bit of a crude construction, but the wires could be hidden behind the rocks I'll be adding later. Usually my following steps would be to sand the side smooth and then prime it. But for this build I wanted to do something different, so let's have a bit of fun with this. I slap on a layer of all-purpose wall filler and then go over it with a textured foam roller. Depending on what direction you pull the roller and how thick you apply the filler, you can make all kinds of different effects and add a bit of interest to the sides. When the filler had fully dried, I also added a layer of wood stain to the underside and added a few felt pads for some stability. You'll never notice this once the build is finished, but I like to add this just as a finishing touch. To add some variation in height, I've added a few patches of modeling clay. I've also covered the wires for the LEDs with this material. With the clay added, I then apply a generous layer of gesso primer over most of the base. This primer will not only help with the painting steps, but also provide a good adhesion for other materials like PVA glue and acrylic modeling paste. At this stage I've installed the LEDs, which I gave a fresh pair of batteries. As the next step I will make a mixture of acrylic paste, paint and some fine sand. This will be used as the cement between the stones. To make the majority of the rocks, I'll be using these rock molds and fill them with casting plaster. I basically started casting these rocks as soon as I began this build, as quite a few will be needed to cover the walls. The paste mixture is then applied on the walls and then the rocks are placed onto it. It's basically one big puzzle and the trick is to try and make it look as random as possible. The overall weight of this diorama increased about 1500% after this, so I had to use the force to still be able to lift it up. I then used some of these small stones to fill in the gaps. The leftover modeling paste was then slightly diluted and applied on the bottom of the diorama. Some fine sand and tile grout are added to add a bit of sandy texture. The miniatures I've used for this build mainly came from this Jabba's Realm expansion pack, which at the time I basically bought just for the Rancor. I took one of these Gamorrean guards and then converted it into this pose. Now I know it looks like he's dancing the Macarena, but just wait, there's a reason for it. I also painted this out of focus Luke Skywalker figure and swapped his lightsaber for a bone. As the next step I start painting the stonework. I start with a base coat of NATO black 
and then follow this up with a light brownish yellow tone. I apply it from a slight angle so most of the shadows remain on the underside of the stones. Some sepia wash is then added to give it some more warmth. I follow this up by dry brushing a mix of raw umber and titanium who white oil paint. I like to dry brush with oils sometimes as this gives a finish that's less grainy than with acrylics. To add some random darker areas I apply a few stains with this black wash and then remove some of the excess with a makeup sponge. The walls around the gate were then touched up with some light tone acrylics. Afterwards the groundwork was also given some more color. Just a quick test on these LEDs which luckily still worked. To give the wall a more weathered look I added a few splashes of brown wash onto it. I also painted the trap door using the same tones I used on the main gate. It's always been my intention to keep this channel as serious as possible, so today we we'll make an animal carcasses out of hair clips. I start by cutting off some bits and then sharpen the edges using a Dremel tool and some sandpaper. Afterwards I drop them into hot water to soften the plastic and then bend them into random shapes. A bit of acrylic body is then added to remove the glossiness of the plastic. I then gave them some color and also added some skulls and bones I had left over from previous builds. These are then scattered around on the floor of the pit. After watching the Rancor scene about a hundred times, I started noticing that besides the skulls and bones, the floor is littered with scraps of ragged cloth, which was something I also wanted to try and replicate. I've made a mixture of equal parts PVA glue and water and then add some dark washes to it. I'll then be adding a few scraps of these baby wipes to represent the cloth material. While still wet, these are then scattered randomly among the bones. I could then add the miniatures to the Rancor pit. After placing them, I finish things up by adding some dry pigments. And as the final step, I touch up the sides with some acrylic black paint. That brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it and to see you in the next one. If you want to help support the channel, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I would love to have you on board. As always, thank you for watching and take care.